All right, so I want to look at what the Greeks did with the circumference of the Earth. Um, this is a pretty unique result. Um, when Aristosthenes was thinking about this, he had some nice measurements that they could do. So if we assume that the Earth is circular, and we have this information that there is one place where the light from the sun casts no shadows. So we'll make an assumption that all the light from the sun comes in in straight lines. And that's a fairly good assumption to make. And that's the one that Aristosthenes made. So if there's some other post down here, that straight line, let me extend the posts from the center of the earth out. Get my angles right here. And so there's a post here and a post here. This post makes no shadow. This post makes a shadow with a small angle. And so let's look at the what the, what happens with the angle here. So what we can have is we can have a straight line to the center of the earth with the post with no angle on it. And we can have a post that casts a shadow. Well, this triangle here uh, is created by the shadow. I'm, I'm going to highlight for you here. So I'm going to we have the post coming at an angle and the light coming in and making a shadow. And so um, Let's see if I can get the angle that Aristosthenes had here. Let me look at my notes. Um, and so he, Aristosthenes measured the angle uh, to be 7 degrees and 12 minutes. So this angle is 7 degrees and 12 minutes. And 12 minutes means 7 degrees and 12 sixtieth of a degree. You know, or 1 fifth. So 7.2 degrees. Now, this triangle, if I make a right angle with this one, These would be parallel lines, because they're parallel lines of the rays. And so these are similar angles. And so this angle between the center of the Earth and these two posts is 7.2 degrees. Now, Aristosthenes is going to walk, or hire someone to walk, the surface of the Earth. And so if the Earth was a circle, this is an arc length. And we have a nice arc length uh, equation. We say that the arc length is equal to the radius times theta. But something neat happens. If this is 7.2 degrees, well, I know this arc length here. I can assume that it's a portion of this, this whole circle. And so if the circumference of the Earth is equal to r times 360 degrees, then in, we can set this up so that we have two equations here. We have the 5,000 stadia that was walked out is equal to r times 7.2 degrees. And I have another equation that says the circumference of the Earth is equal to r times 360 degrees. So I, I, I'm able to set up a system of two equations. Well, what's nice about equations is this is a number. 
and this is a number. Each side represents a number. So if I want to find the circumference, I'm going to divide both equations by each other. So I can say the circumference divided by 5,000 stadia is equal to, I'm going to take this equation and divide it by this equation. So that's the radius times 360 degrees divided by the radius times 7.2 degrees. Well, the radius cancel out, and so we get the circumference is equal to 360 degrees divided by 7.2 degrees times 5,000. And so we have the ratio of the degrees um, will equal times 5,000 will give us the total. Uh, and so putting that all together and we'll note that we'll run to the calculator here. 360 divided by 7.2 is 50. So this is 5,000 times 50 or 250,000 stadia. So the Greeks were able to measure the circumference of the Earth. Well, how good is that? Well, in, in the problem I said, hey, a one stadia is equal to 157.5 meters. Let me make sure I have that right here. I want to make sure I'm quoting my, yeah, 157 meters. So I'll turn, I'll turn that into a unit conversion. So I have stadia here. So I have one stadia equals 157.5 meters. And I think I'm going to keep converting a little bit further out because what I'll say is one kilometer is equal to 10 to the third meters. Right. I'll use my um, unit conversions. So I have to 250,000 times 157.5 divided by 1,000. So I'll chop off 1,000 there. So that takes care of that. Stadia cancel stadia. Meters cancel meters. And if I multiply this together, I get 39,375 kilometers. So in um, what was the year again? Um, oh, did I put the year down? Yeah, so 194 BCE. The Greeks measured the circumference of the Earth to be 39,375 kilometers. If we look at the modern measurement using lasers and space flight, it's 40,075 kilometers. So the Greeks were only off by roughly 700 kilometers, or 1.2%. And they did this by using a shadow and walking. And this is an example of what you can do with a simple trigonometric relationship that the angle of the shadow versus something that has no angle represents the angle subtended across the, the Earth and what the circumference means. And so with some simple tools, you can get a very, very good measurement of the circumference of the Earth. Now it happened to help that the Greeks um, were near the equator so that they could see a stick that didn't create a shadow and that the land that uh, of um, Egypt that, that had to be walked was relatively flat so this measurement wasn't um, affected by hills. But using that, those two lucky ideas, 
they were able to get a fairly good measurement of the circumference of the Earth. And this was 194 years before the AD, you know, so what are we looking at? Um, almost 2,200 years ago. And this is the power of the trig relationships we're learning.